right, so this week is going to be a fun one. This is The Who with The Seeker, released in 1970. This is one of my favorites and just has that golden era Pete Townsend tone with his guitar um, that just sort of from that sort of Tommy until, I don't know, Quadrophenia maybe, like just great rhythm guitar sound that, that shows up on this song as well and a super fun lead guitar that um, I don't think anyone's really nailed out there on the interwebs and I think I found the secret to it and I want to share it with you today so stay tuned. So if this is the kind of thing that you like and you haven't done so already please jump down and click subscribe and ring the bell. Bell will let you know when I drop new content. I do that every single week. All my lessons have chapters in them so you can jump right to the part of the lesson that you want to see and bypass what you don't. And if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, I appreciate that. There's thanks, which is just like throwing a tip in the tip jar. There's a button below. Or you can join my Patreon page where you get chord charts and tabs for all the songs, lessons that I do on YouTube like this one. Um, all the links are in the description and check it out. Okay, so let's get to The Who, The Seeker. Um, let's start with the rhythm guitar. Um, so this song is in standard tuning and it's in A. Um, and we're going to be all about power chords um, with the rhythm guitar on this song. I'll have all the details in the description below of my signal chain on here, um, but I'm using my uh, uh, my Kirk Douglas Signature SG, which I love. It's got some split coils and things in there. Anyway, I've got, um, I got some split settings on here going on to try and approximate um, the sound that's on the record. I have no idea what he actually used, but we'll see. Um, but let's talk about the chords, right? Okay, so this is in A, and we're gonna be doing these um, sort of hammer-ons from an open, uh, open to an a fretted A, and I'm just sort of laying my index finger at the second fret, and I'm really only hitting uh, the top sort of four strings, right? I'm not, I'm not actually hitting the major third of the A. Um, in a meaningful way, I'm trying to sort of avoid that in most of in most of this. Right, so it's going to be it's going to be that sort of um, feel. Now the strum pattern is really interesting, and um, I, I'm going to link some uh, resources here. There's a there's a couple great. Um, alternate takes of the the seeker and the one that's got an isolated guitar on it with the piano and then one that's got um, sort of an unedited version which has um, additional verses and things um, that were cut out of the final uh, the final mix but one of the things that's on that unedited version is it has Pete Townsend's voice mimicking the strum pattern <laughs> that you do on the on the rhythm guitar you know this Right, that that whole thing. Um, in fact, let's give it a listen. Listen here. Super funny, right? But yeah, the strum. There's basically two kinds, two variations um, of the strum, mostly that happen throughout the song. And there's sort of a less busy version and a more busy version. And the less busy version sounds like this. Right. And the more busy version is. So it's just the back half of that where it's a little more busy. And he alternates between the two. And it's not always in the same, you know, order. So um, just have fun with it. But it's basically those two. And then you layer on this open to the A. And that G is a is a, basically a, I'm again, not really concentrating on hitting all the strings. I'm just sort of those bottom four strings coming back to a D. When you alternate the strum, right? So your chords are open to the A. And the G to D, I'm just hitting those. Oh, 
Okay, and then the turnaround is F to C, C to G, and rinse and repeat. One tip when you're doing those turnarounds is I'm sort of avoiding the the major third of these chords, right? So I mentioned power chords. Power chord is just the root and the fifth, basically, and maybe octaves of those, but it's the root and the fifth, and you're not really playing the major third of it. Um, so the F more sounds like, more like that, and I'm just muting it, raised my, raising my middle finger to sort of mute that third string. And then same thing when I get to the C, I'm not, I'm not playing that note. I'm more doing this. So F, C, and then C to G. Again, I'm not playing that, that note. I'm trying to mute all those. And if you, if you sort of miss, it's fine, but. And you play it aggressively. That's the whole thing. Okay, then the next part of the verse is uh, uh, you're going to play a, a D and a C add 9. And then back to your A. Turn around. So all about aggression, all about aggression. So then there's a bridge section. Um, when I raise my voice in anger, that part, it's D. Bar C add nine. Back to your A. Again. and then end on an E. And if you want to play that E, that's fine. I do this power chord E. So um, that whole part again. All right, now providing a counterbalance to the main um, rhythm guitar that's happening, because you can hear that rhythm guitar and it's usually panned to one, depending on what mix you're listening to, it's panned to one side. And then on the other side, you can hear this um, higher pitch guitar thing that's going on and it provides this great complement. Um, on the first verse, he's just playing a part of an, like a barred over A chord here at the 14th fret. So it sort of falls within the rhythm of like that's the timing. All right, he's just doing that. And then when it goes to the D, he plays this, he just plays this E note at the I, I you know, it's either there or here. All by itself over the D, which is kind of a Kind of a neat effect. Back to your A. And then on the turnarounds, it's hard to hear what he's doing exactly. Um, he might be doing F, C, triads, C, G, triads, and then back. Now the second verse, and, and on from that point, um, it's a little more, uh, little more involved, and you always gotta add something, you know, Pop Song 101, you need to like, every. You don't repeat everything exactly the same time all the way through. You need to like embellish somehow. You need to grow it to keep the listener interested. So the way he does that with this little accent part is he just adds a little more to it and he plays a little more aggressively, right? So it's sort of like a... Sometimes he stabs it, sometimes he leaves it.
So 12 and you're just you're playing the sixth and fifth string. And then same thing, 15, 17. And then when you come up to your D, you're just playing that, you know, this D chord, but an octave up. Your turn around. So that's the nature of that part anyway. Um, super cool. You know, if that wasn't there, you would miss it, you know. Um, but that's all there is to that part. Okay, there's another part that's very interesting. Again, sounds sort of like a mandolin that's going on. And um, it involves some pretty speedy picking um, technique. And uh, it plays sort of in the background during the, the bridge section. You know, when I raise my voice in anger and it goes to a, a D chord. Um, so what I'm talking about is this part that sort of sounds like Right that whole thing. So before I talk about where he's playing that and what he's doing um, Technique so uh, For me, I know many people are very good about having their wrist light and you can sort of do this all day I'm not I'm not there yet. So here's here's uh, what I do anyway. Is I take my pick um, and I turn it to the rounded shoulder side of the pick um, because it's easier to sort of move on and off the string when you do that. Um, and the other thing that I do is I, I turn it so when I'm hitting the string, it's sort of diagonal. It's not a straight on against the edge of the string. So for example, if we turn the guitar this way, you know, normally when you're playing a, a, when you're playing and striking the strings, you're sort of coming straight down like that with the pick. And what I'm doing here is I'm turning it, right? So you move from this to that. So it's sort of hitting the string diagonally. And I'm also up here, for me, it helps to actually put a little weight on this and I do it up here sort of against the fretboard, you know? So, um... Again, if you've got really awesome technique, I'm sure you could you could do that down here. I don't <laughs> yet. Um, so what I do for things like this is I bring it up here onto the onto the neck. And it seems to it seems to be a lot easier for me. So what is he doing here? So he opens up on a, the first chord is a D. And um, he's playing uh, an E note, actually, to start it. He bounces between an E and an A note. Right, so. Right, um, that's, over the, that's over the D chord, the first D chord. And then he goes to an A chord, and he's just playing notes that are in the major scale of the A chord. Back to your D. He plays that note now. I'm not doing it exactly note perfect. The tabs will have it, but the, but any note you play in the major scale of D when he's playing a D chord. And then over the E, I got values, but I don't know how or why. He's playing the notes that are in an E seventh, like. So he, he does those notes. Right? So obviously I still have practice to do on this, but that is what's happening on that guitar. Um, uh, during that section, All right? And then we're gonna go into the guitar solo. Now, we'll talk about the guitar solo in just a sec, which is super fun, but the rhythm guitar is just playing the same thing, the same verse under that 
um, lead. <laughs> Right? And it's just what we've learned. So I love this solo on The Seeker and I've struggled with it for a long time. And um, I think the way to crack the code with this, I finally broke down and realized is that he used a capo. And yes, I believe he used a capo. Um, and uh, the, the, you can do this in a couple different positions. Um, seventh fret is where I think it was done on the record. You can also put it on the 12th fret and get a very good version of that as well. Um, but I think the seventh fret is where um, this solo was uh, done with the capo. Um, and it's all sort of done on a, you know, again, this is song is in, you know, it's a one, four, five ish uh, uh, in the key of A, right? So your A is your D shaped A up here now. Right? So you're gonna, we're gonna be moving mostly between a, a you know, an A, or, I mean, a D-shaped A and a G-shaped D. But that's where everything is going to happen here. So um, let me walk through it um, briefly real quick just to give you some context, right? So that's all the first part of the solo that's in A over the A chord, right? Um, so you're building off of that D shape. That's the sort of melody, but very fast and just fur you know, furious. Dot, 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 dot. the first part right then you're going to slide it's like you're doing the bottom part of that d-shaped a card chord and you're just playing strings five four and three now you're going to go back to the top of the chord and you're going to add that high e note on the 12th fret it's just a d shape with that e on top Just bouncing back and forth, right? So notice everything so far is da 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 like that's governing everything that you're doing. Now here's a dissonant part. Think of that as our next chord that we're gonna go to is a D, right? And think of that as a D7, the part of the D7. You're just grabbing that part of that. And you can hit that, you can always pedal off of that open fourth string because that's an A now, because you've capoed it, right? Right? And you end it with. Now we're gonna transition to our G, or our, I mean our D note, but it's played like a G. And we're just, again, playing the bottom part of the chord. And everything falls nicely right there. I'm just going back and forth on all these strings. Right, that figure. And then he just sort of double down, doubles down on that, um, just playing with the rhythm. So, so you know he's just getting punches so here's how he ends that or comes out of that part of the G part so that's just reaching all the way over here just barring at the 12th fret back here and then we're going to hint at that 
that little seventh thing, but you're gonna you're gonna be one fret down and you're gonna bend it a little bit. You do that. Okay, so what that is is give one big hit to the your A chord. Just give one one little sort of quarter bend on both of those strings. And you're going to end here. Yeah, so the, the trick on the timing with that is you're just going to hit one A. And then you just stab that. From that point on, it's just open second fret, third fret, uh, you know, the, the figure is this. And you're just going to repeat that all the way out. Okay, so one more time all the way through. come out of it doing a uh, you hear him hit the open third string and you and, and he does an F shape or a, a C chord actually and then a, an F shape to a C shape which is a C to a what is that G right he sort of you only hear the really only plays the, the lower notes part of it but and then one more time on the A and you, he ends on that big sort of G shaped D chord because you're going into the bridge section that's it it's at the seventh fret um, is how that is played. Now, if you're playing this live, you may not have the luxury of having the seventh fret capoed and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can actually play this very credibly with a normal standard tuning um, uh, and do most of that solo almost record perfect. Um, you just need to change the positioning of where you're playing some of these things. Um, so now we're gonna do it off of this shape of an A. Okay, um, and everything sort of falls again very nicely in this shape here, but it'll allow you to keep the normal standard tuning um, when you do this. So I'm going to have the tab for this available. I'll sort of walk through it a little bit um, very briefly, but just wanted to show you that this is also an option if you're playing this live on a standard tune guitar. Okay. <laughs> Not exactly the same, not exactly record perfect, but um, super credible and would sound epic if you were doing that live um, on a regular standard tune guitar. Okay, so there you go. There's two ways how to play that solo. Okay, then coming out of the solo is one more. It's back to your sort of bridge section. <laughs> verse now the outro it just runs through another verse um, and uh, there's only one last thing that's that's different on the very outro part 
Um, and there's our quick stabs, their quick turnaround stabs that um, end the song, right? So the way those come in is, is after the, it does the verse section and it does your turnaround. Around one more time. One more turnaround. And then here's the outro. So again, that's just a quick turnaround. And again, you don't play those major thirds. Okay, well that was The Seeker by The Who from 1970, and I hope you learned something new today. If you haven't done so already and you like what you saw, click subscribe. Ring the bell. The bell lets you know when I drop new content. I do that every single week. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this, and if there's another lesson you want me to take on and do something similar, let me know what that is too. But until next week, take care everybody. <music>